Hi, I'm Mitch, and thank you for joining us on the Restoration Road as we continue our series through Philippians, Paul's letter about joy and how to experience joy in our lives. We've talked about joy in suffering, joy in serving, joy in believing, and today we're going to move toward Philippians 4 and talk about joy in giving. And I want to uh, start out by introducing you to my good friends, uh, our guest today. <laughs> You're making me laugh already. Uh, you've heard him on uh, uh, Laugh USA, XM Sirius Radio, and Blue Collar, and he's traveled all over the world. His new CD is entitled Clap for Me. Clap for Me, and his new book is Touchy Subjects. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David P. Dean, the clean comedian. Thank you so much. How can we get your CD? And your book. It's not available. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody wants it. Uh, can they go to your website? DavidPDean.com. And that's where you have everything? Mm, David Dean Comedy. Do you say something funny every day on there? Four to five times a day. Oh, I love it. I'm just a bag of love. That's awesome. And you tweet. Bag of funny. You probably tweet out funny things too? Oh, my wife can tell you. It's just, <laughs> it's just constant stream of humor coming out of my mouth. That's awesome. All day. That's Every awesome. day. And speaking of humor, all day, every day, the meteorologist, the chief <laughs> meteorologist, uh, our good friend, Curtis Smith. Curtis, thank you for being here. Great to be here, Really Rich. appreciate it. Yep. And uh, professional volleyball extraordinaire, empowered club here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Sir William Robbins. How you doing? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. I want to ask you guys this question. Have you ever worried? I worry about my kids. Uh, I worry about money, you know. I worry about uh, spending habits in our family. Uh, <laughs> that was a kind oh, of a... Oh, protected so well. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was really good. Thank really you. good. Um, I worry about uh, priorities, you know. He would have just slid that in there. If you had to make a comment. <laughs> in, in our family. <laughs> in our family. Um... I worry about our kids most of all, I think, you know. We're kind of, I know Mitch, you and I are in similar kind of stages of life. Mm -hmm. Our oldest is a freshman in college. Mm -hmm. First time kind of putting them out into the world without us there every day. Uh, that's cause for worry. Your first one, oh, Will, do you have children? No, not yet. Um, two dogs, so okay. I worry about them. <laughs> well, that's, that's well, reason to worry. Road. I mean, they... But your oldest, you always, it's, it's the first time down this road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the first for everything. Mm -hmm. That first birthday party, that first game when they're a child, that first whatever it is, that first departure out of the house, it's, it's the best and the worst. Yeah, it is. I thought what you said is, is so transparent. Um, I, I could probably say yes to every single thing that you said on what I worry about. Uh, how about you, Will? Ministry business, um, you know, I'm on actually my fifth business in five years. You know, things have continued to grow That's and a multiply. Good thing. No, it's definitely a good thing because <laughs> every taken as the as the opposite. Yeah, everything has led to the next step yeah. and continuing to grow larger and larger to where now we have 68,000 square feet and wow. you know really have just a beautiful facility. You know, like he's he's referred to the Empower Sports Club. Um, where now we have multiple sports with volleyball, tennis, and futsal, and we have a uh, you know a fitness center and a smoothie bar and a pro shop. And, and I'm glad you mentioned the smoothie bar because the uh, Elvis is really really good. <laughs> is it really? Oh, it's it, phenomenal. The Elvis. It is good. Yeah, you it need to just good. stop by and get it. Oh yeah. The, the chunky monkey is my <laughs> personal favorite. He can handle like a thousand calories at a time. <clears throat> yeah. I got to go a little lower. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of working out, I mean, we have a fitness facility. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, What's just point saying, point we're just not uh, <laughs> he, he just mentioned it oh, earlier. That's, oh, that's right. He oh, did yeah, he yeah, yeah. it earlier. He, <laughs> that's another worry. That's a, uh, I yeah. worry you, you worry about, you know, your, your health and stamina and fitness and everything. And you know, the, just a little bit ago, the four of us got our picture together. And I, I put my arm around Will. And I thought, holy cow, that's a building. <laughs> it is. It is. And I brought it my is. hand. I was bleeding. His, yes. <laughs> he cut me. He was so... <laughs> He's so cut, he cut. He <laughs> cut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, so the business and then, you know, with the stresses of a business and having, you know, multiple employees, so you want the business to be successful and, you know, we've bought this place and we're turning it around and, you know, it's struggled in the past. And so you have those stresses, but then also, you know, you have a family at home and so then you're trying to balance 
you know, I'm, I'm working 120 hours a week. I'm neglecting, the, you know, my wife at home and, and, you know, I gotta get home, but then you try to balance and stay home more, but then you're neglecting the business. And then on top of that, I chose to continue to travel and play professionally. And so mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gone almost every weekend for a period of four to five months. Um, and so trying to do work while I'm on the road and it, it, it gets, uh, you know, there's a lot of worry as far as can I juggle everything, can I make everything successful, and, and then most importantly, am I still staying focused on Christ and still doing the ministry and, and walking out the ministry that he has for me because too many times I've found myself being a workaholic and, and he actually coined the phrase all in, you know, I've always been all in and everything that I do and, you know, and sometimes that can be you know, it's helped me to get to the highest levels in sports because I've dedicated a lot of time and I've committed to it, but it's also then also got me where I've, you know, haven't been able to balance certain things in my life because I'm so focused and all in in certain areas mm. that I neglect other areas. And so my biggest worry for myself really is probably balance and making sure that I'm yeah. taking care of my first ministry with my wife, my family. and. You know, and then now this facility, it's, it's a Christian-based facility, and we're trying to minister to the kids through sport and provide a, a, a you know, a nice, you know, facility that you can bring your whole family to and enjoy all the different, you know, amenities and making sure that we're staying focused on that and not getting too focused on money and, and, and the other pitfalls uh, that we can fall into. And then, you know, and seeing, okay, is there some speaking engagements? Is there kids I need to be ministering to? And you know, and, and mentoring, uh, and really just making sure I'm still doing everything that God wants me to do. And, you know, and we, we do have a great spiritual advisory board that uh, doesn't meet quite balance. as often as we'd yeah. like to, but uh, which Mitch is a part of. Oh, you are? Uh, yeah. yeah, he's worrying a lot because I'm on a spiritual advisory <laughs> We haven't met lately. I'm That's why I'm worrying. Okay. <laughs> well, when, when we worry... I tried to get a biblical picture of what's going on inside our spiritual hearts. And here's just one way to describe it. Um, you can remember our four chambers of the spiritual heart through the acronym WISE, our wills, our intellect, or our minds, our spirits, and our emotions. Um, the will is the chamber of our choices. The mind is the chamber of our thoughts. The spirit's the lead chamber of our prayers. And the emotion uh, represents the chamber of our feelings. So just like the, spirit, uh, the physical heart is four chambers, so the spiritual heart is four chambers. But here's what I think happens. Um, I think, uh, I'm going to start with the mind. I think our minds tend to be, when we worry, that we focus on the future, um, fearing that we can't control the outcomes. I think our emotions are usually stuck in the past, from past hurts, you know, getting dinged. And our wills are frustrated uh, in the present um, because our expectations weren't met. And then our spirits remain hindered uh, in their vertical connection to God. And so what happens is our spiritual hearts, when we worry, uh, they're out of alignment. And we need the, uh, just like our spine needs a chiropractor to adjust mm. and align our spine. So we need the Holy Spirit to adjust and align our hearts with Christ. And worry is the problem. Prayer is the solution, and peace is the result. So uh, the Apostle Paul shared in Philippians 4, 1 through 9, I'm going through the worksheet that you can get online as well. Um, he said that prayer offers peace for worried hearts. And Paul pleaded for peace in relationships and offered his prescription for peace with God, peace with others, and peace within ourselves. So Curtis, if you could please read um, Philippians... Let's go one through four and uh, learn a little bit about peace with God. Well, I, I, I'm worrying for Curtis, by the way, over a couple of these names. This is, uh-oh. Oh, no, I haven't looked ahead either. This is going to be good. <laughs> <Shoot>. <laughs> go ahead, Curtis. <laughs> go ahead. Did the, uh, mes best did the message chain the change them to like common names like Joe and Bob? Mary and, and Todd. Right? <laughs> I All urge right. you, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Carl. Why is Carl so funny? I don't know. It's just funny, isn't it? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I apologize in advance. Um, Philippians 4, 1 through 4? Yeah, I think so. All right. <laughs> Therefore, Actually, if you want... You don't can, let him, let him okay. go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just read one. <laughs> <laughs> you could go to four. Maybe you could just read four. Just four. Please, no, please. Four is easy. I got four. Okay. <laughs> Could you do He's, verses one and two, Curtis? 
<laughs> right, I'm going to attempt all four. Everybody we'll yes. watching is getting their Bibles out now. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, here we go. Therefore, my beloved brethren, whom I long to see, my joy and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. I urge Euodia, and I urge Sintaish, bless you, <laughs> or Bob and Carl, <laughs> as referred to in the message, as referred to in the message, to live in harmony I in the Lord. I think they could write for you. <laughs> Indeed, true companion, I ask you also to help these women. Oh, so not Bob and Here Carl. we go. Oh, oh. Here we go. <laughs> Mary. Sue and Diane. Yeah, Sue and Mary. Yeah. Uh, indeed, true companion, I ask you also to keep these women who have shared my struggle in the cause of the gospel together with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Mm, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Peace with God, rejoice in the Lord always. It's interesting that he didn't say sometimes. And too often I think we allow anxiety or worry to overcome us and we go on autopilot trusting in ourselves rather than God. I think that's what really what happens. Uh, anxiety or worry is a divided inner being and we're, uh, we got one foot in with God and one foot in, out trusting in just ourselves. And I think that's where the worry comes from. Is we, it, it comes from trusting in ourselves. And uh, this robs us of joy and peace that's found only in Christ who discovered joy in suffering for us, according to Hebrews 12, 2. Um, can you look at what you worry about as either that heart that's out of alignment or you're tr you see yourself actually trusting in yourself in that worry that you could share? I heard a pastor say years ago that when you worry, you're offending God. Mm. And I look at it like, I and mean, we all travel like when you're at the airport, and we travel as light as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. And so I can go four or five days on, on a carry-on and a backpack, but I, I see the sky cabs of the people who are going overseas. And you've got those people who get out of their truck, and they walk past the sky cab, and they've got 14 bags, and they're just trouncing through the airport. Just They're, they're pulling it, and they're... Their shoulders are killing them and they're just still dragging all. I'm thinking, you know, 10 bucks, give it to the sky cap and let him take it. Where God, he does it for free. You, you're carrying those mm. bags of worry. Why wouldn't you just give it to him? But for me, I almost don't want to, I don't want to bother God. I'd rather just take it on myself. I think I might have it in the worksheet. Maybe I don't, but. You just quoted uh, 1 Peter 5, 7, I believe. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Cast all your uh, anxiety on him because he cares for you. That's why you're so good, because you've got it all back there. And just I'm being serious. I'm, I might have the wrong no, reference. listen, I'm being dead serious when I say this. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you're one of the few guys I know that when you, you bring up something, you can just, you know, you just reference that verse like that, Mitch. That's just amazing how you do that. Thank you. Um, but that's a super I'm just illustration. trying to get on the show for next time. <laughs> we call yeah, that the security. underplay for the overplay. He's, <laughs> he's trying to make sure he's a shoe in for the next round of filming. Curtis, how do you feel about the host? No. <laughs> he's been quiet. Uh, I love him too. He's great. <laughs> Curtis, would you read the names of those people? That <laughs> I can't wait to see David's show. I feel like, Mitch, you should be the next Oprah, where you get your own network, and then we all Ooh. have our own shows on, on your the network. network. Yes. The Weatherman. So that's, <laughs> that could be Dr. Oz. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you could. <laughs> Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil, who uh -huh. are you, David? Who would I be? I'd be Stedman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just in the background, Stedman. never got my show. <laughs> I'm back here. <laughs> that would be good, a show that's not a show. Oh my goodness, you got something. And you're getting all the airplay on XM Serious Radio. You need to run with that, son. <laughs> that would be awesome. Okay. I'm David, and here's my show that's not really a show. It's not a show. <laughs> and how do I know Restoration Road's on the air? Is this just kind of for fun, or is this the real deal? There is something I want to confess to you guys. <laughs> you just wanted to hang out with us for the I did. Right. I did. There's no film in the cameras. Or I guess they don't use that anymore anyway. <laughs> that reminds me one time, long time ago. I was a kid. I was probably in elementary school. And my dad was just laughing, and, and I said, what happened? And there was this um, 
car auction that they had that they did with a guy, a real big promoter uh, in the western United States. And Dad was auctioning cars, and Dad leaned over to the guy uh, that he was doing the auction with, and he said, my goodness gracious, he goes, that national television camera has spent so much time here. Are they doing an unbelievable feature or something? <laughs> and the guy starts laughing. <laughs> He goes, what? He goes, there's no film in the camera. It just makes everybody more excited. <laughs> it looks good. It looks good. It looks good. Oh, my hey, goodness. You were, you were talking about worry, and it, this made me laugh as I was... It seems like you... It, it, I heard a, a guy say years ago, whenever you want to run away from God, Satan will provide the transportation. So the mm. times my mind wanders the most is when I'm in church. Mm. And kind of like, well, I'm out quite a bit. So when I get back on Sundays, it's kind of a breath of fresh air. But I haven't been for, for some time. But I catch myself sometimes in church, deep in the heart of a sermon or a great worship song. Um, I'm writing. I'm taking notes. And my wife will look down and see that I'm, I'm doing, like, the budget. Like I'm... oh. Like, like trying to figure crunch numbers for things or jobs or upcoming events or where I'm going, the itinerary. And she's like, what are you, what are you doing? I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about stuff. I'm, I'm worrying about. There's the message right there. There's the sermon or there's the song. And you're sitting there. You're, you're at the throne of God and you're almost, you know, it's offensive. You're, you're writing out your worries. And... Uh, you know, that, that seems to be the place where I, I, I do it the most, where my mind, I really have to focus hard because your heart is troubled. And, um, uh, you know, of all places, why am, I, why am I doing it at the house of God? So, I really like that statement that worry offends God. And then your other one about... Um, if you want a pathway away from God, Satan will provide the Yeah, whenever you want to run from God, Satan will provide the transportation. Bill Crawford, my, my friend who was a youth pastor for years and years in Chicago, uh, he told me that. And I, I stole it and made it my own for a lot of years. And so, Bill, I do apologize. If you're, um, <laughs> Josh you're McDowell listening. told me one time you uh, quote the person the first time, the second time you can say a wise man once said, and then the third time you say, it's like I always say. <laughs> <laughs> And that after years and years, my uncle, <laughs> my uncle Larry said one time. <laughs> Next time you worry, thank God for the opportunity to find joy in him, to see what that would be like as you identify with the sufferings of Christ. But we first need peace with God, obviously, but we also need peace with others. <laughs> Curtis, could you read Philippians uh, 4, 1 and 2 again? <laughs> <laughs> could you read Philippians uh, 4, 5, verse 5? Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. God's proximity to us. Some say that means that Paul said his second coming was close, but I think contextually um, it's, it's more like this. God's proximity to us is as close as the air that is in and around us. When we have peace with him in our hearts, he frees us to have peace with others through gentleness rather than harshness. Gentleness is power under the Spirit's control, and I've noticed that it restores relationships. It restores our relationship with God. It restores our relationships with others, and it restores others' relationships with God, and that's a whole other show. But uh, Solomon, an advocate of gentleness, taught that there is joy for those who promote peace, Proverbs 12, 20. So it would be like reconciled relationships, advancing that cause, even with officials. Well, <laughs> um, continuing that... Uh, 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 Solomon continued that an anxious heart weighs a man down, but a kind word cheers him up, Proverbs 12, 25. So I think it's interesting how worry doesn't just affect our relationship with God, but it affects our relationships with others. I mean, just think about when you're worrying about something, how it's going to affect your relationship with your wife uh, or uh, other people around you. It might, if you're worrying about money, it might put pressure on uh, vendors or it might put pressure on uh, the, your employer. You, you might do that. You know, there's all kinds of relationships that can be, um, become catastrophic because of the worry that we bring to the table. And is it a pride thing, too, when you feel like, if I, if I worry a, a whole bunch and let everybody know that I'm worrying, hmm. then it, it tells them, hey, this is a sense of concern. Mm -hmm. 
That's I want you to know how frustrated and, and upset I am. And I get, I get mad at times right, when we go to bed and my wife, who's just as calm and easy going as the day is long, she goes, yeah, I just I brought it before God. So, okay, good night. <laughs> <laughs> and I lie in bed and I toss and turn. I look at her sleeping and <laughs> I'm thinking about it and I'm taking notes and I, then I look at her sleeping and peaceful in God and ah, then I feel like it's, it's almost like a, a pecking order if you worry more mm. then it lets people know that That's you're really, really concerned. That's really insightful. Is, are you being serious? I'm being really serious. Once again, <laughs> your own show. Job security. <laughs> I'm on next year. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's true, especially if you Don't externally you that, process it. Yes, yeah. That is you, really you are important. almost frustrated with the guy who's well, like, I gave it to God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to worry about it. It's a cancer. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give it to God. It just eats up my soul. I mean, and, bless yeah. the person that can do that. You know, uh, the saying, pray like it depends on God, but work like it depends on you. I have a tendency to focus on that second part. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even if I have given it to God, okay, okay, now what, God? Now and what do you want me to do? Pray like you are wearing depends. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I pray sometimes at my age. <laughs> at my age. <laughs> Just off the cuff. It's, it's just amazing. Don't you think that sometimes? <laughs> yeah, this is great. <laughs> this is great. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so next time we worry, let's not only thank God for the opportunity to find joy in him, but also surrender any harshness to the Holy Spirit and be soft with others, even when it's difficult to do so, and use kind words to promote peace and joy. Uh, I mean, we could just hit the cut button right there, really, because that's where the rubber meets the road is uh, how we are in relationships with others. So Paul gave us uh, peace with God, peace with others, um, the antidote to worry uh, through prayer, and finally peace within ourselves. Uh, did you have anything we should read in the message in 4 or 5? <laughs> I think Curtis, he Curtis covered it. Nailed it. Isn't, that the, isn't that the children's song, Rejoice in Lord always? Yes. Again, I say rejoice. Yes. Mm -hmm. I sing that real quiet. I didn't want to get too loud. But that's the. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say it again, because help me out here. You're the, you're the biblical scholar. But there were no, exclamation points. Right. Correct. Right. No italics. And no so if you wanted points, to reiterate a point that was very very important, you would say it again. Right. And so that's is that why Paul said it to the Philippians exactly. twice. Exactly. Yep. You're good. You are good. You should have your own show. Hey, who are the other two guests on your show? <laughs> who oh, over there. Who are they? There, there they are. <laughs> Here, let's just you and I share a Bible. <laughs> Curtis, peace within ourselves. Uh, could you read Philippians 4, 6, and 7 from the NASB? To bring Curtis back into the show? Yes, to bring Curtis back into the show. <laughs> Who's your orator? This is you the NASB. <laughs> Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Another song. Yeah. It's interesting that I got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart mm -hmm. is in the context of prayer. Yeah. Um, Paul describes uh, peace within ourselves. He wrote that we should not worry about anything. Rather, we should pray about everything so that Christ would align our hearts with his, giving us perfect peace. Anxieties, remember, misaligned inner being divides trust between God and trust between ourselves, which actually pains our hearts at the end of the day. That's how we're wired. It will pain our hearts to not trust in God and to be trusting in ourselves. And prayer is worry's antidote because it places our trust solely in Christ, just like St. Betsy does. Um, prayer is being online with God. Uh, Paul delineates between uh, petitions, requests, and actually prayer. Prayer is being online with God. So it's that connection of our heart with his and how he shapes our desires to be like his. Um, but uh, in that connection, we upload our requests. So there's a request or petitions. And then he downloads his presence. So we got to be online with God all day long. There's just that conversation going on all day long. And oftentimes where we're listening 
you know, not just talking. And um, it's amazing how that changes everything. I did a worship concert, and Curtis will remember it, uh, with Tommy Walker and his team. And they, when they were hanging around us for those few days, um, they were so um, external in processing their relationship with God. Hmm. They would be uh, talking about him or to him uh, in many ways as we were just having conversations. And in being, after being around him for a few days, I found myself walking through the hallway of my house alone and I, I started to go like, praise you, Jesus, you know, mm. thank you, God, things like that. It just started coming out of my mouth and I thought, wow, there's a whole nother way to do life to just be in that continual conversation with God <laughs> and even have it come out of your mouth, yeah. you know? So I just, uh, I think there's a lot to be learned from, from you know, their behavior and, and how they live life. So next time we worry, we want to pray. We want to go online with God upload our requests and he'll download his presence. Send and a friend request. Yes, do Send that. A do that. Request. And he will uh, Don't shape worry our that hearts. he'll respond. <laughs> he will. Don't worry, he'll respond. He will. He will. How will he do that? I have a friend in Jesus. <laughs> I just... <laughs> <laughs> so long if you know that. <laughs> Do you do worship? Uh, do you have a worship leading part to your skit? No, I'm, I don't. Did I say it? Call it a skit. A skit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your skit act show. Your I'm skit sorry. Show. <laughs> that little thing you do. That little thing you do at children's parties. <laughs> at children's did my voice parties. change? Because I'm bringing this back to the end right now. <laughs> we all know when we just gotta shut up and close our Bible. Dad's voice is coming. <laughs> There's a whole lot more to come in Philippians 4, and I would just invite you when, you, when you worry, pray. Get online with God. Upload your request to Him. Just do it 24-7, and He will download His, his presence, and he, he will transform your worry into trust through prayer, and you will experience the peace of God that passes all human understanding when you pray to Him. You'll have a reconciled relationship with Him as you trust Him, He'll help you have a reconciled relationship with others. And you can experience that peace within your own heart when you pray to him. Thank you so much for joining us. Grab the worksheet uh, on our website so you can follow along uh, next time as we continue in Philippians, Joy in Giving in Chapter 4.